Okay guys, today we are going to be talking about five EDC knives that I would never sell. Now in a video I did not so long ago, I talked about uh, some 10 outdoor knives I would never sell, whether it be for sentimental or different purposes or some knives that I actually sold and then ended up buying another of. And so uh, in this video, we're gonna be talking about some EDC knives that have the same place in my heart as those knives. Okay, so let's jump right into it with number one. Now this is pretty hard, I really like all of them, but I think I'll start off with the largest of the bunch and that is going to be the Benchmade 630 Skirmish. Now the Skirmish is a discontinued knife from Benchmade and it was made a few moons ago, I think back in the early 2010s. But when this knife first came out, I was just getting into everyday carry and knife life, so to speak. And so this knife uh, was one of those that I looked at and was like, wow, it'd be so cool to own one of those. But at the time they were going for, I think like 300 plus dollars. And so weren't exactly attainable. And by no means is this a super expensive knife. There are more expensive knives on the list, but this one for me is just a grail knife. It was really the first knife that I, especially for everyday carry, that I set my eyes on and was like, you know, one day I will own one of those. So this is the 630 Skirmish. I don't actually carry it too often now because it is a pretty big knife. Uh, to put it into perspective, this is a large Sebenza 21 and that is the Skirmish. So it is a solid few inches bigger than even a pretty large knife. So uh, that is a 630 skirmish. It is big, it is definitely tactical, but the skirmish itself is designed by Blackwood and it is just a really beautiful knife. Of course, like I said, very hard to find nowadays, but uh, it is just a really nice, well put together titanium frame lock. And the cool thing is, you know, this knife was released pretty early on. Um, it actually is a fairly old knife and the fact that back when it came out it was using S30V blade steel titanium frame lock. It kind of uh, it was designed to compete with the CRK Sebenza in a way uh, with build quality and materials but the fact of the matter is it still stands the test of time and the materials that this knife is using are still quality materials even nowadays so it is just a really awesome knife definitely a grail knife and never leaving my collection because it is one hard to find and two just a knife that i always wanted from the kind of inception of my knife collecting journey so that is the benchmade 630 skirmish Okay, now let's move over to another one that's kind of an uncommon one, but this is a Spyderco Spidey Chef. Now the Spidey Chef is a very interesting one for me because initially I really didn't actually think I would like this knife that much because unlike all the other knives that will be mentioned, this one isn't really tactical. I mean, you could always push it into a tactical role and it could work, but uh, overall this knife really is kind of unopposing. It's very plain Jane, if you will. You know, there's not that much contouring to the titanium handles and it kind of just is what it is. You know, the knife doesn't doesn't really try to be anything special or fancy, but it really is quite special and fancy. So first off, it uses one of my favorite seals, LC200N, which is a super corrosion resistant or rust resistant steel. Some might even make a claim that this is a stainless steel, where this is probably about the closest you're gonna get to true stainless steel. But aside from that, um, this knife is designed, as the name kind of implies, as a chef's knife. And so it occupies this really unique uh, territory within my EDC that it is a very good food prep specific blade. So it is very good for things, like I said, like food prep. It's good for opening packages, you know, doing just general EDC tasks. This thing isn't trying to be tactical per se, as much as it is trying to be just a really solid everyday carry, you know, food prep knife. Not to mention other things I really do like about it is the fact that it is very streamlined, very thin, very easy to carry in a lot of situations. And it is also super smooth. It is one of, if not probably the smoothest opening knife on this list. And you can see that when you use that thumb hole, to deploy it, even though it is not the easiest to flick out, it does 
the lie out. And that is because it is super, super smooth. It's kind of hard to tell on closing it how smooth it is because the frame lock puts a good amount of pressure on it, but it is very smooth. And of course it does use their nice wire clip from Spyderco. So overall, this is a win on a lot of uh, fronts, but it is on the list for knives I would never sell just because it really does have a unique kind of spot on the list, being the fact that it is really more of a kind of knife that is designed to cut food or a, a food prep kind of EDC blade. And true to form, that is what I usually use it for. Okay, so the last ones are all kind of set aside because they are kind of, uh, at least when I was getting into knife collecting, these were kind of deemed like the holy trinity of knife of the high-end American-made folders. So the first one's going to be the Strider SNG. The second one is the Hinderer XM18, and this one, of course, is the three inch model. And then the last one is the Sabenza 21, and this is the Chris Reeve Sabenza 21. Now, of course, this is large, or this is the large Sabenza. This is a three inch XM18. This is just an SNG, but essentially these three models here were kind of when I was getting more into uh, knife collecting and knife owning in like, I would say the mid 20 teens, these were kind of seen as the three blades uh, or the three manufacturers and these knives representative of their manufacturer that if you wanted to get a high quality American made knife that a high quality American made folder uh, that is tactical and uh, just these are kind of the go-to's. So like I said, you have your Strider SNG, you have your Chris Reeves Sabenza. Now, like I said, this is the large 21, but the Sabenza 21 and your Hinder XM18. These are all kind of the, the essential workhorses, workhorses of their brands. And so for me, it was really nice to actually finally get all three of these brands or to own one from each of these uh, knife makers because they are kind of the pinnacle. And it's nice to just have them to compare them and contrast them because in a lot of ways they're all very similar of course they are all titanium frame lock folders and most of them use either the same or very similar blade steels of course my hinder and my sabenza both use cpm s35 vn this one's using s30v but you can also get um the Hinder in 20 CV, you can get the Striders in 20 CV. You know, there's a whole bunch of different, uh, there's different steels you can get these tools in, but ultimately they kind of represented the uh, apex of what American knife manufacturers had to offer when it came down to uh, tactical folders for everyday carry. So for that reason, that's why I wouldn't be getting rid of any of these three, but if for no other reason, I also wouldn't get rid of the Sabenza because I actually already had a Sabenza and I sold that Sabenza, so I've bought another one. Uh, so I wouldn't get rid of the Sabenza for that reason. I also really like carrying all three of these knives. They have a considerable amount of pocket time, each one of them, and really when you begin to use them, you realize why these three manufacturers were kind of chosen and why they are so well loved by the EDC community. None of these knives are cheap. You know, the cheapest of them is probably this one and it's about $400 or this hinder is about $400. So all of them are quite expensive, but they really are uh, kind of hallmarks and representative of the best that manu American manufacturing has to offer. So that is my top five, the Skirmish, the Spidey Chef, the Hinder XM18, the Spyderco SNG, Spyderco, the Strider SNG, and the CRK, um, the CRK Sabenza. Hopefully you enjoyed this and hopefully you liked the breakdown of these knives that I would never sell for everyday carry. Once again, all of these knives, except for maybe the Skirmish, do get quite a bit of pocket time and mean either a either mean a lot to me or are very functional and very practical for my everyday carry situation. As always, God bless and I'm out.